Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Today we will have a look at Black Ops 3 and its netcode. Now, if you watched any of my previous videos, then you know what the terms ping, tick rate and update rate mean. But for those of you who are new to my channel, I will quickly explain their meaning, because otherwise you won't be able to understand what I will show you later. So when you play online, then your game and the server obviously need to exchange data. When your game sends a data packet to the server, then this packet needs some time to reach that server. How long it needs depends on how far away you live from that server and if you use a copper or fiber internet connection. The travel time of the data is not affected by your upload and download bandwidth. So don't get confused when people talk about internet speeds, because that always refers to how long a download or upload takes to finish, which is mostly affected by your bandwidth. The travel time of your data is one of the most important factors for online gaming. Because if it takes your data very long to reach its destination, then it's outdated at the moment it arrives. This is now where the term ping comes into play. If your client tries to ping the server, then it sends an ICMP echo request, which needs some time to reach the server. The server then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your client, which again needs some time to reach you. And your ping to that server is then the round trip time of that whole process. So the higher your ping, the more you lag, because the data is no longer up to date when it reaches its destination. Then we have the update rates, which is how frequently the clients and servers send data. Some games use the same rate in both directions, others use different rates for the client and the server updates. The more frequently these updates are sent, the more data the game has to work with, and this means that the game becomes more fluid. It also affects your lag, because it does make a big difference if you receive 10 updates per second or 60 updates per second. This incoming data then needs to get processed, the physics and bullets need to get simulated, and then the game has to send the results. How frequently this is done is defined by the simulation rate or tick rate of the game. And again, the more simulations the game runs per second, the better the game feels, because it processes new data earlier, and it has more data to work with because higher tick rates allow for higher update rates, which means less lag. Now, where are those multiplayer servers coming from? One solution is that you pay hosters to set up dedicated servers for your games in their data centers to which your players then connect to. This means that your game server is running on powerful hardware and has enough bandwidth to handle all those players who connect to it. The downside is that if you don't have a game that builds around the idea of the community running these servers, then the publisher or game studio has to pay for them, and they are quite expensive. The other approach is that you simply use the PC or console of one of the players to host the game, which means that he becomes the server. With that solution the game studio does not have to pay for these expensive dedicated servers, which have to be available in many different regions. The downside is that the player who is also the server gets an advantage, because he has zero lag, which means that he will see you before you see him, and he can fire at you before you can fire at him. You also face the problem that all players have to connect to this host through his consumer-grade internet connection, when the worst case is also using Wi-Fi locally. This frequently results in a lot of lag, jittering player movement and unreliable hit registration. But the most frustrating aspect of such a client-to-client -client connection is that if your host disappears, then the game has to choose another player to host the match, which means that the whole game pauses for several seconds until it finished to migrate to another host. So while dedicated servers do not magically provide 100% lag-free connections, they still offer the best possible experience in online multiplayer games. But what kind of system does Black Ops 3 use, because Call of Duty has been in an on and off relationship with dedicated servers? According to the developers, the game will put you on a dedicated server as long as you live near a data center, where most of them seem to be located in Europe and the United States. If you live very far away from a dedicated server, then the game is capable of falling back to the client-to-client -to -client connection system, where one of the players will also be the host. Private matches on the other hand will always use the client-to-client -client connection system, where one of the players is also the host. Now that's what the developers say, but is that true? On PC we can actually check that very easily. All we need is a small tool called NetLimiter, which will reveal the IPs of all the connections that the game established. So when we go to the multiplayer section inside Black Ops 3, then we see that the game connected to three different servers. When we now check where these servers are located, then it becomes pretty clear that these are the back-end servers of the game, which are used for the login system and other things that the multiplayer needs to function. Now, when we search for a game, then we get a whole lot more connections. 
The IP which shows the highest traffic is our game server. And when we do a little background check, then we find out that this server is hosted by gameservers.com. Now let's check our connection to the server by running a ping, which will tell us the round trip time of our data. 20 milliseconds is a pretty good value, but let's have a look at the in-game scoreboard where we should see the same value. But here we get 37 milliseconds, that's 17 milliseconds more than the actual ping. The only explanation that I have for this is that the in-game value is my ping plus the data processing delays of the client or the server or both. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing to have the game add those processing delays to the ping, but it could confuse players because other games show you just your ping without those processing delays. And so a player might wonder why he always has a higher ping in Black Ops 3, even though he plays on a server which is in the same country. So we have the three IPs which are from the backend system of the game and we have one from the game server. The remaining IPs are from the other players who also play on this game server. For some reason the game establishes a connection to all the other players and I have no idea what these connections are used for because there are only a few bytes sent and received every three seconds. Maybe these connections are there because the game also has the client to client system and the developers didn't disable this behavior when you play on a dedicated server where the game does not need to directly talk to all the other players. With this information I could now attack those IPs and bring down those players internet connections so that they can neither play nor stream the game. To have the game reveal the IPs of all the players who are on the same server is not a very good idea. So when I played online then I always got placed on a dedicated server. I've never seen the game use the client to client system here. But as the developer said, the game can fall back to that if you live very far away from those dedicated servers. Now how about those private matches? When I do that here with two PCs connected to the same network, then the clients connect directly, as you can see here in NetLimiter. This means that I'm essentially playing in LAN mode now with a ping or data travel time of less than one millisecond. However, when we look at the scoreboard in game, then we can see that the host has a ping of 9 milliseconds and the client has a ping of 15 milliseconds, which is close to the additional 17 milliseconds that I showed you before on the online server. So as I said before, your ping or travel time of your data has a big impact on the lag you experience. And I think that we have fully answered the ping question now for Black Ops 3. Now the other values that affect the lag are the update rates or how frequently data is sent and received. The program Wireshark allows me to capture the network traffic of my PC. And when I then take a look at the data that my client sends to the server, then we can see that most of the time there are 20 milliseconds between these updates, which means that my game sends about 50 updates per second to the game server. And when we now look at the updates I receive from the server, then we can see that they are about 50 milliseconds apart most of the time. Which means that we receive only 20 updates per second from the game server. When I go through all the network data, then there are cases where I send and receive data a bit more or less frequently. But most of the time it's 20 updates per second from the server to the client and 50 from the client to the server. Now how does all of that affect the network delay or lag that player experience when they play the game? To find out I have a special test setup here with two PCs where each of them uses its own fiber internet connection and a 144Hz gaming monitor. The game is running at more than 144 frames per second without vSync and a 400 frames per second camera records what is going on on these monitors. This allows me to very accurately measure the delay or lag that two players experience while they play on the same server. In the first of two tests player 2 fires at player 1 and I then measure the time it takes for player 1 to see the damage indicator and the firing animation. In the second test player 2 jumps and I measure the time it takes on the screen of player 1 to see him jump. Now when we take a look at the results from the test in LAN mode then we see pretty similar values for all these tests. 65 milliseconds was the worst measured delay for the damage indicator to show up. 32 milliseconds was the lowest measured delay and the most common delay was 42 milliseconds. The reason why I say most common and not average is that I chose to show you the delay that I measured most of the time plus minus a few milliseconds. Because that's the delay that the player was affected by most of the time. I could just calculate the average delay but that value would then not be the same as what the player actually had to play with. So testing was very easy in a private match. The problem began when I tried to test on a public server because no matter what or how many times I tried I could not get these two players in different teams. 
So in the end I had to run my tests on a hardcore server and shoot my teammate. During these tests both players had a ping of 21 milliseconds inside the command line, while the scoreboard showed around 38 milliseconds. And as we can see, playing on a public server did increase the delays quite significantly. I've also performed these tests in Counter-Strike and Battlefield to give you something to compare these values to. And Black Ops 3 does not look that good, especially when compared to Counter-Strike GO, which shows nearly the same results online as Black Ops in LAN mode. Now, if you're wondering what kind of delays you could expect from the console version of the game, then you have to keep in mind that the game was running at more than 144 frames per second on 144Hz monitors without VSync. This means that on console the delays will be higher, because the game runs at a lower frame rate there. And if the developers use VSync, then the delays will be significantly higher. So what could the developers do to reduce the network delay in Black Ops 3? First step would be to increase the rate at which the client receives data from the server, because as my tests suggest, you only receive 20 updates from the server while you send 50. To send and receive updates 50 times per second could already reduce the delay by nearly 30 milliseconds. However, the game will never be completely free of lag, because of the travel time of the data or how far away the player lives from the server. So unless you play in LAN mode, the network delay or lag will always cause that the other players are not exactly where you see them. You are shooting at ghost images. To allow a player with a ping of 75 milliseconds to still get a hit marker when he fires at a player, the game has to compensate his lag. How strong the lag compensation of a game is, is entirely up to the developer. In Black Ops 3, a player with 270 milliseconds is able to hit a moving low ping player without leading his shot. And that player will then receive that hit even though he's behind cover on his monitor, which is not a good experience for a player who has a decent internet connection. If the lag compensation wouldn't be as strong as it is, then the 270 milliseconds player would not have hit the low ping player in this case. Which in my opinion would be the right thing to do, because the low ping player can't be allowed to suffer just because someone else plays the game at a ping that he shouldn't play a shooter with. How lag affects the game can also be seen in the kill cam. If you play under perfect conditions, then the kill cam works pretty nicely. But online you will run into cases where you die and then see in the kill cam that the other player missed you but still got a hit marker. Or that you didn't even fire at him from his perspective. Such glitches make you feel that you died because of the game and not because the other player had more skill. If a player who has a decent internet connection can get that impression from your game, then you have a serious problem. These delay test videos are always a lot of work and present interesting challenges. I hope that I could show you a thing or two that you found interesting and if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.